Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to work on material exploration, but before I show you your next task, I want to just remind you guys of your photo scavenger hunt assignment. So you were asked to take pictures of reflections. We practiced in school, we tried to find different subjects like looking through a door, looking through a window, um, etc. So you guys did that with a partner here in school. And as you completed or found those, those subjects, you should have checked them off. On the back at home, you were asked to find a few more reflections and um, the one that m I'm gonna be kind of lenient about is the puddle, even though I sent you all an alert that there were puddles outside. <clears throat> I saw lots of them right here in this school, outside the school, puddles. Um, but if you didn't find that, I'll be lenient about that. But all the other ones you should definitely find. So how you're gonna submit this to me is you are going to upload all your photographs to your drive, or if you have a different procedure like iCloud, that's fine. But you're going to then copy all the images, there's 22 of them on here, onto a one Google Doc that you then submit to the assignment. That will be written out for you and I'll give you your assignment with those exact directions. All right, any questions from my class about that assignment? No. Is it pretty easy? Yeah. Did we like find these items this weekend? <coughs> Not all of them? How Good did we question. do that? No, I, I just, I just like, yeah. do it. <laughs> <laughs> do I just like take a picture of it like, and turn it in the classroom or do I have to like send all the other pictures? You need to send all of them because sometimes you might not think something's a good picture but with a little bit of editing, Dee Dee, okay, stop it. You're not being a model student right now, Dee Dee. Kick her out. Hey, Let's kick her out. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but for real, you, um, you might not realize that something's a good picture but if you zoom in, and maybe do some cropping or change the contrast, you end up with something really interesting. That happened with several of my students already. They're like, I don't know if I like this, and then I kind of showed them how to zoom in and maybe add a filter, and it looked great. So um, remember, the subject matter does not need to be you. It could be you, but it could be anybody that you desire, but you have to take the picture or at least guide the picture. So for example, if I wanted to do a self-portrait and I would say, Sonja, do you mind taking a picture of me? I wanna like have my reflection on this window here and then I would guide her and she would take the picture. You got me? Okay. All right, so what are we gonna do today? Well, already you were asked to do the marker page and it should look complete in something kind of like this where you picked one color. It didn't mean, it did, I didn't mean one marker. I meant like one color. So all the variations of that color that you can find from light to dark. I probably could have went lighter here, but it's fine. If you did something like this, it'd be fine. Um, this one, red to green, that is to find a neutral. So 100% red, 100% green, and in the middle, 50%. So that's like a makes like a brown or a neutral of that color. The next one, analogous colors. Those are three colors, right? Next to each other. Next to each other on and the on the color wheel. And they usually share a color in common. So it's like one primary, one secondary, and then that middle color is called the? Intermediate Primary color. Intermediate color. Good job. You got it, Calvin. I hope you knew that. I'm not even an AP art. You could call it intermediate or tertiary. 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 Okay? So your tertiary color are your two word colors like yellow orange. So for this one, I did red orange, orange, and yellow orange. So I had two tertiaries, but they're right next to each other, so it worked. Okay, blending free space, just have fun blending colors. There's no like wrong way to do it unless you don't blend colors. You should at least have two colors. Okay, and then after you've done all that, the very last thing is this sphere. Put it all together. Use value, blending, and then the colors complement to make the shadow. You see how it all came together in this one little sphere? You see it? 
All right. Can I do that? Yes. Then the next page was watercolor practice basic. If you decide to do watercolor for your medium, I'm going to have some more advanced watercolor techniques just for you all. All right. But watercolor, um, you know, using the the different techniques that we already went, went over. If you want to know what they are again, there's a video for that. Just watch it. All right. So what are we going to do today? Pen and ink and watercolor. Now, what you're going to do is put the same thing, put newspaper under your paper. So many people were forgetting to do that so that you can protect the paper underneath. And there's newspaper at every table, like a pile of it. So just grab a piece of newspaper. Not the whole thing. Not the whole thing. Read it first. Right? There's enough for everybody. Read it first. Read it first. I need no. the discounts. Please. No, you don't. It's old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not a model student right now. Don't drink the watercolor water. You didn't drink that. <laughs> oh. Worries me. <laughs> You're so disgusting. Yeah. All right, model students. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is um, we're gonna the first part is pen and ink only, and the second part is watercolor, but using it slightly different. So every table is gonna have um, some of these different um, ink pens and some ink. And what you're going to remember is to put your ink and your ink pen, some are flat and some are pointy, so maybe you want one of each, okay? And it's it's brand new, so you don't even have to like shake it up, but if it was sitting there a while, I might say just give it a little shake. Um, and you're going to take the lid off carefully because it tends to splatter, okay? And you're going to do some hatching lines, cross hatching, and stippling. So I'll do a couple in each area. Now, do you guys remember doing pen and ink in the past with me? Yeah. Yeah. What did I always tell you to do? Not mess up. Not mess up? I don't think I said that. <laughs> I might have said, eh, you messed up, gotta do it again. But um, messing up is like part of the process, right? That's why we practice first. So I said, maybe this will come back to you. Dip, drip, Dab. Oh. oh. Ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Ready? Oh God, Dip. <laughs> Dip. Drip. Dab. Dab. Oh. oh my God. Oh my God. I feel so white. One more time. That's okay. All right, all right, all right. One more time. All right. We got to hit the whip. And now we Dip. all Dip. Ready? Dip. Drip. Dab. <laughs> Come on, Jasmine. Hatching lines. So the lightest means you're just going to do a couple little hatching lines. A couple. It's not working. It is. I'm just trying not to like um, press hard. Okay. What then, do you do? Um, if you press hard, you might end up with a blob of ink. So I'll show you over here. Right. So I'm using the. I'm practicing here. Now this next one, I'm going to add a little bit more. Dip, drip, dab. dab. Now the next one, hatching lines. The closer the lines are together, the? The darker the value. You could go diagonal or vertical or horizontal. I don't care. Just, just, do, it. just do it. Can you make a sphere with ink? Yeah, you can. It takes a little bit, you know, to get it flowing, but once you get enough ink on there, it flows pretty good. All right, so the first one wasn't maybe as good, but I could go over that. So when the lines are further apart, they look lighter. When they get closer together, they start to get darker. You want to try and keep the ink level as even as possible, although it's kind of difficult. I might have to go back over that line. I'm too impatient for ink. 
Ink might be nice if you have some silhouettes mixed in with your work. It could look really nice because it's so dark and it could be, I really like watercolor done with pen and ink on top. I think it looks really cool. All right, cross hatching. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you have to cross over. Okay, I'll do a couple more. I'm okay with this not being so dark there because it looks kind of cool to me. Again, dip, drip, dab. Okay. Trust me. <laughs> and again, you might have to dip several times. And then you just keep going. All right, stippling. You guys remember stippling? All right, stippling is just dots which looks really great for certain types of texture, okay? So each box should have more and more dots closer together. And then it should progressively get darker. That one might take you longer. Now, shading the forms. Use hatching technique to shade the forms. And you should, guys, hatching lines, do they have to be straight or can they be curvy? <laughs> they can be curvy. So what you're gonna do here is decide where the light source is coming from and you're going to create some hatching lines that are curvy. Darker on the side that's opposite. So if the light source is coming from the top right, then it's gonna be darker on the bottom left. So these are hatching lines. Now they're gonna get further apart as it gets closer to the highlight. So something kind of like that. And then I might wanna just have one or two more little lines here, just to develop the form, okay? Then you do the same thing for the box. So for the boxes, if the light's coming from the top, the opposite side is gonna have more lines. Maybe I wanna change direction for this one. So I have some vertical, then I have some horizontal. And then maybe a, just a couple on the top. 